Now, let's cover time entry. There's actually three different ways you can get time into our system. I'm going to go up and select my time and expense entry tab here. And now I can use timers to time things real time while I'm working on them. I can do after the fact time entry. Also, I'll show you how to take a calendar appointment if you have our calendar module and convert that to a time entry in the billing system as well. Now I'm going to go into the timer screen here. And this is my timer screen. This allows me to run timers, time things real time while I'm working on them. I'm going to hit add timer. And as you can see here right now, I'm looking up by name. I can click right here and look up by ID as well. I'm going to look up by name. That's what I'm used to. Just start typing it'll autocomplete. I can type enough to get close and scroll down, find the one I want. Tab over. Ask me for my work code. And same thing here. I can start typing it'll autocomplete for me. Uh, I can, the way I've got myself set up here, actually, I can preload some time into my timer. I'm going to have this start counting at 15 minutes. Uh, just got off of a 15-minute phone call with a client. Didn't have my timer actually going during the phone call. Now I've got to do some work to follow up from that phone call. So I want to include that 15 minutes for the phone call on my timer. You can restrict that on a per-user basis if you don't want people to be able to do that. Now, uh, it's pulled my default right here, FOL and 150. Uh, now I should mention too here, on the, all these time entry screens, uh, the rate information you're seeing, I am logged in as a, as a system manager so I can see my rate information. Again, I'll remind you that you do have the ability to set up staff so that they will not see their rate or billable amount information on these screens. Uh, now I can tab over to my default work code and the default work code gets plugged in for the particular work code that I, the description rather, gets plugged in for the uh, particular work code that I use there. Now I can remove that, uh, I can modify it, or I can embellish upon it, either one. And I can type as much as I want to here. Also, I have the ability here, depending on the type of invoice I'm going to do, whether or not this text actually gets exposed on the invoice. If I am going to be doing a detail slip or a super bill that shows the detail and expose that information on the invoice, I do have the option here of putting a tilde in, and anything I type after that will not show up on the invoice. Uh, you know. Okay. And that note will not appear on the actual invoice that the client gets, even if I'm exposing the text from the time entries. And these are unlimited text fields. I can type as much as I want to here. I can hit Add Timer. And now I've got a running clock going for that client. Now, if I am working on that, now I should mention I can minimize Imagine Time all the way down to my icon bar, op open another program and work in it. That timer is still going to keep track of time in the background for me there. Once I get to a stopping point on that, or if I get an interruption, pull back up my timer screen, hit pause, pauses that timer. Uh, if the interruption is another client, I can actually come over here to add timer, select another client, and a work code. I'm going to plug some time in this just so there's some here when we finish them up. And now I've got another timer running for a separate client. Um, you know, I can work with that client when I get to a stopping point or when I get finished up with that one, go back to work on my original. Uh, and two, I should mention here, you can have as many timers as you want listed here. In actuality, if you run out of real estate here, you get a scroll bar over on this side of the screen to scroll through the timers. Now, the way I have my system set up, it will not allow me to have but one timer running at a time. You do have the ability to change settings so that you can actually allow several to be running at the same time. But I like this because now when I get to a point that I'm going back to work on this one, if I just hit running clock there, it's going to automatically pause my other timer and start that one running for me again. So it works real well if you tend to juggle back and forth between tasks. When I get to a final point on that, I just come in, hit finish. It gives me a chance to review my timer, see if there's anything I need to adjust finish my timer up. Now, uh, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen here, my chargeable, non-chargeable, total hours for the day, and again, I can see my amount since I'm not a staff level person. Finish up my other timer here, review it, and hit finish, 
and everything at the bottom of the screen here increments. Now, if I'm using timers consistently during the course of the day, at the end of the day I can come right here and say no, I want to include saved and unsaved. And here is my timesheet for the day. And this actually includes full detail every time entry, my client name, my date, my client ID, work code that was used, start and stop times, or incurred time there if you will, hours incurred, rate, amount, and any text that was entered with each one. And you'll notice here it does expose the full text, even the note that I don't want exposed on the invoice. Uh, now this does give me a daily subtotal, gives me a separate total for chargeable and non-chargeable times. And if I had any expenses for the day, they would be listed down here at the bottom. So quick report on my time for the day, make sure I got everything entered correctly, that type of thing. Now here it asks me if I want to save those as slips. I'm going to say yes. And you can see there's check to save now. I would have gotten that same question if I went to exit the screen too. And I have just created two chargeable time slips in the billing in the whip for those clients. Now I'm going to close that. Uh, the second method of entering time is after the fact time entry. And actually Fritz has it set up right here on his favorites, so I can just click right here. This is I'm going to have my ID by default. Staff cannot enter time for other people. Management level people can enter time for other people here. And now this is my after the fact time entry screen. Still the same basic information for my time entries here. Client name, RID, work code, uh, pulls my default rate there. Has today's date by default there. Now I can type a new date in that and I can use my up down arrow on my keyboard to toggle that a day at a time. Also I have the ability uh, to click on the little calendar here and then just double click the date I want. Now I can put in start and stop times or I can just put in total incurred time and again my default description again I can elaborate upon that if I need to. Now, a couple of things about this screen. Since I'm in here as a management level person, I can see my rate and my amount information for each time entry here. Also, at the bottom right of this screen, I can see the AR balance, which actually uh, All Rise has a credit AR balance here of 7514. Here is their unbilled time at standard rates, so their whip value. There's a $300 retainer or progress billing that's been issued to the client. Uh, hasn't actually been applied toward time yet or hasn't had time cleared against it yet. So here is my net unbilled time. Here's my expenses and my total billable value. So literally management level people when they're in here, you kind of a heads up, if you will, of where they stand with their client as they're entering their time. Uh, two, you'll notice at the bottom left here, I've got my running total. This is actually for today. This includes the timers. It doesn't actually include this timer yet, because this entry here, because I have not actually finalized it yet. Um, as soon as I tab to the next line, now these figures all update, and it's my total time for the day. Now, two, there are repeats up here I can cut on if I need items to automatically repeat from slip to slip. I've done the same type work for multiple clients. Uh, there are several choices here for sorting of the slips on the screen too. Also, here is my non-chargeable on this tab. This is where I enter my non-chargeable time. Again, non-client related time. And expenses get entered here. Now, here's where I mentioned to you earlier when we we're setting up expense types in the company setup. If I come here and select uh, my client and today's date, uh, let's say I do auto mileage. When I select that work code, when I tab out of that field, it puts in the description and the highlight actually jumps to the bottom of the screen here to the quantity field. And I'll tell it I drove 23 miles there and back. There's my extended amount to my client, 1070, and tab and I'm ready to enter my next entry. Now if I pick something that does not have a per piece rate on it set up, let's do other expenses here. Now it goes to the description field lets me type a description in and straight to the amount field to type my amount in. So the behavior changes depending on how you have the work code set up. And now there are my two expense entries there. All right. Now there is a transfer tab here. 
what this transfer tab does, and alluded, alluded to it earlier, that there is a remote time entry module you can purchase. Uh, what this module is used for, if you have people that are going to be working out in the field where they're not going to have internet access, they can actually take their laptop with a copy of the data file on it, keep track of their time, enter their time on their laptop while they're doing work. They can either email an off, a small file back to the office when they get to where they do have internet access, or they can wait till they're back at the office and hooked back up to the network and import that into the database. Now, if they email the file in, somebody at the office obviously has to import it into the database for them. But that is our remote time entry module if you have a need for that ability. Now, the third way that I had mentioned, I did mention I would show you three ways to get time in. I'm going to go to my calendar and due date. Pull up my calendar. This is Fritz's calendar. Real busy guy this week here. Now I'm going to select, uh, let's do uh, 9 o'clock here. And I'm going to double click to open up an appointment pane. And select my client. And let's make our time a little bit longer here. And let's say I'm going to put a note here about what I'm doing for the client. Let's say we're doing QuickBooks setup. Okay. And change my priority here. This will change the color that it shows up on my calendar. And now, too, I can set reminders, that type thing in here as well. But here's the way that appointment's going to show up on my calendar. I can come in after the fact, select that appointment on my calendar, double click in it to open up my appointment pane again here, make any edits I need to to notes or times, drop my power options down, tell it to record this as a time slip. Now what it's actually going to do here, it's going to jump me into my after the fact time entry screen, but it's already pulled in my client name, my date, my times, my duration, and my notes for my calendar. The only thing I have to do is tell it what work code to associate it with, close that screen, Close that screen. Shades this a different color now, and I just created a time entry in my billing system from that appointment on my calendar. Now, there will be a separate module covering the calendar and the functionality of it. There is quite a bit of very useful functionality in it, uh, in addition to the neat little feature I just showed you there. But let me close back out of that. And that's basically the three ways to get time into the system, using timers real time, after the fact, or converting appointments on your calendar if you have that module to, appoint, to actual time entries in the billing.